Hello everyone and welcome to the Cisco Support Committee. Today we present the live expert series webcast and our topic today, Understanding and Managing Cisco Unified Communications Manager Certificates. My name is Satish Chandran and I'll be moderating today's event. Our expert joining me today is Akhil Bell. Akhil is a Solutions Architect and Cisco Ad with Cisco Advanced Services, focusing on Cisco collaboration and security architectures. He leads collaboration and security projects worldwide for the enterprise segment as well as the collaborative professional services portfolio for the commercial segment. Previously at Cisco, he spent 10 years in various roles at Linksys and the Cisco Technical Assistance Center, that's DAC. He holds a CCI in voice and security, P PMP certificate, ITIL, VMware, VCP, and MCP certifications. He has published several research papers in international journals including IEEE Explorer. He has been a speaker at prominent industry forums such as Intercop, Enterprise Connect, Cloud Connect, Cloud Summit, Cisco Secon, IT Expo, and Cisco Networkers. He's an author of the book, Securing Cisco IP Telephony Networks by Cisco Press. Welcome, Akhil. In the expert panel, we have Ashish Jolly. He'll be answering some of your technical questions while Akhil is presenting. Now I'd like to briefly outline the format for today's expert series webcast. Our topic will start, our expert will start with the presentation on uh, topic understanding and managing Cisco Unified Communication Manager Certificates for first hour of the program. And then we'll dive into the live question submitted by you for a remainder of the event. During our live presentation, you may submit your technical questions to be answered by our presenter and the expert panelists using the Q&A boss, which is on the right-hand side of the console. The team of technical expert is well-versed with Cisco Unified Communication Manager certificates. So please begin posting your questions now to give us the best chance of answering them. And if you experience any technical issues, please post those uh, issues in, again, the Q&A. And uh, we'll be asking polling questions during this webcast. We highly encourage you to participate by answering them. And you may also download a copy of today's presentation using the link which is uh, in the chat window and uh, the document ID is 39186. Okay, so let's get started with today's uh, first polling question for the audience. The question is, do you have UC security deployed in your Cisco collaboration network? There are four options. Option A, yes, I have multiple UC security controls deployed and leverage them in my Cisco collaboration network. Option B, no but I want to deploy UC security and ensure that my Cisco collaboration network is protected against common and uncommon threats. Option C, I'm not sure if I should have UC security in place. It's still in that, the works. And option D, I'm pretty sure that my network is hack slash attack proof and I don't need UC security and I, as I have firewalls, IPS, content aware security, etc. So please take a moment. The poll is open on the right hand side. Okay. so. While you answer the poll, uh, and I'd like to hand over the mic to our expert, Akhil, for the presentation. Akhil, over to you. Thank you, Satish. So the session um, is based upon facts. It's, it's not a theoretical session. It's based upon facts, and the session is geared towards understanding and managing Cisco Unified Communication Manager certificates. Now, when we talk about security, there are a lot of things that come up right from say endpoint security to infrastructure security to application security. However, what remains in the background is that security is based upon certain facts and certain frameworks. And one of the framework is certificates, that is PKI, public key infrastructure, and that is what we are going to explore during this session. With that note, let's look at the agenda for today's session. We'll begin with an introduction to Cisco Unified Communications PKI, as I mentioned earlier. PKI is the basis of certificates. Without PKI, there are no certificates. The public key infrastructure remains standing. It has been there for some time. It will be there forever, as far as we can hope. And it's, it's the framework around which certification, certificate authorities, certificates, everything is built. Post that, we'll look into the CUCM certificates, that is what CUCM certificates are all about, what are the different formats they are available in, and 
what UCM certificates present to us in terms of security features. Following that, we'll take a deeper dive into understanding CUCM certificates and their functions. That is what different type of certificates we have available at our disposal that Cisco has empowered us with and how we can best leverage them to secure a Cisco collaboration network. At the last, we'll look into how best we can manage CUCM certificates because deploying a network, implementing it, designing it is one aspect. However, maintaining and, and operating a network that is a production network specifically, uh, requires some management skills. And around certificates, there are certain tools, there are certain processes which we can leverage at large to ensure that the certificates are, are managed properly and uh, we do not face any issues with the services which are dependent upon these certificates. So with that note, let's get started. We'll begin with an introduction to CUCM, uh, or Cisco UC, public key infrastructure. So what is a PKI? If you ask me what is a PKI, my simple answer would be it's a framework. It's a framework around which certificates are built. It's the common notion between a trust identity, a trusted identity, a trust verifier, a trust point. So there are multiple terms which I just used and we are going to demystify them in terms of UC PKI or Cisco Unified Communications PKI. All in all, a PKI is a scalable and secure mechanism for public key distribution. It offers encryption because encryption is the basis of cryptography. When we talk about cryptography, we talk about encryption. That is how we can scramble data so it's not visible to any party which is essentially not part of the conversation. So if I have certain message which I want to pass on to, say, another party, then in between me and the remote party, that message goes as a scrambled message. And nobody else should be able to snoop in and look at the contents of the message. That's what cryptography is all about. That's what encryption is all about. So PKI offers encryption and digital signature verification. That is, yes, I, I am who I claim to be, that is, I verify or authenticate myself. Now, PKI enrollment must be performed using a secure channel. That's a must because when you do PKI enrollment or when we, when we go for PKI enrollment at that point in time, if it's done in an open media, it, does, it, it fails the overall purpose of uh, secure certificate exchange because your keys are exposed. Now, to implement PKI in practice, what we have is X, dot 509 version 3 standard. That's the standard which all modern day certificates till date use. And we will explore more into the same. So what is the X.509 version 3 standard? It's a standard by which PKI is implemented. Originally, the X.500 standard came out which was aimed at having a global naming structure that is a directory structure which today as well we leverage the LDAP services, whether it be a Microsoft Active Directory or an Netscape directory. So whatever Active Directory or LDAP server we have, it's based upon the X.500 standard and X.509 has its origin from X.500. Now talking about the contents of an X.509 based certificate, as you can see, there is a certificate snapshot on the bottom right of your screen, and it has various fields to it. So there is a common name. This is a mandatory field, and it's the name or the host name of the server for which the certificate was issued, or the server which is issuing the certificate. So there can be an issuer and there can be a requesting of, uh, entity. Now there is an organizational unit there is an organization, there is locality, state, and country. And as we can see for the certificate, which is in picture here, there is a common name of CAPF, so this is a Cisco Authentication Proxy Function Certificate. The OU is UCP, O is Cisco, L is WALL, S is New Jersey, and country is US. So what we have here is a certificate which is showing up all those fields, although you, you can go to your Internet Explorer browser or say Firefox browser and 
try and look at a certificate. At the end of the day, that certificate may not have all, all the fields. So some of the fields are mandatory, others are optional. However, in, in uh, context of CUCM, when you install a communication manager at that point in time, every single field is required. So that's why you see all the fields are filled in. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of PKI uh, as a framework, we need to understand what is encryption. As I said earlier, I mentioned it. Encryption is, is the essence of cryptography. At the end of the day, what we are doing is we are trying to transit a message or we are trying to protect the data at rest. So whether that's data at rest or data in transit, it is to be protected from prying eyes or nosy audience. So what we need to do is we need to scramble the data such that the man in the middle, now I'm not talking yet about man in the middle attack, but a man in the middle cannot snoop in the data and look at the contents of the payload. So essentially what we are doing is we are maintaining the confidentiality or, or the privacy, as we can call it, of the message from uh, the originator to the destination. Now encryption can be done in two forms. It can be symmetric encryption and it can be asymmetric encryption. Symmetric uses the same key. So for example, A wants to transmit a message to B and C is the intercept in between. Now A will use the same key, say the key's name is Z, and B will also use the same key Z. So A will encrypt using Z and B will decrypt using Z. And in this case, the same key is to be transmitted over to B from A for B to be able to decrypt that data or vice versa. And in this case, if C does not have the key Z, C will not be able to decrypt that data. Now what you do see here in the snapshot is, it's the uh, asymmetric encryption because we have an encryption key and we have a decryption key. So in asymmetric encryption, there are two keys. One is a public key, which we share with everyone with whom we want to transfer or say share the data or to transfer the data with the entities. And the other one is a private key. So private key is never exposed. That is kept to ourselves. So for example, uh, if we want to use asymmetric encryption and transmit data from A to B, what A will do is A will share its public key with B and B will share its public key with A if it also intends to transmit data to A. At that point in time, A would have its private key, its public key, and B's public key. B will have A's public key, its own public key, and its private key. So what A will do is it will A will write to the payload or the data with its private key, transmit it to B, and B will decrypt it using A's public key, not with its own public key, because it's a lock and key mechanism. Only the right key of the originator can unlock the data. So essentially, B will have to use the public key of A to decrypt the data. And this has an advantage over symmetric encryption because in symmetric encryption, we are using a single key. And if that key is compromised, everything is compromised. However, in case of asymmetric encryption, since we are using a private and a public key, the private key is never exposed. So even if someone has my public key, it does not mean that essentially he or she has the access to the channel via which I'm sending the data or if vice versa, if they have access to the channel via which I'm sending the data, they might not have the public key. So essentially that provides an additional layer of uh, support or say security. Uh, the point to note here as well is that CUCM offers asymmetric encryption both for signaling in terms of TLS, transport layer security, as well as media for secure RTP, secure real-time uh, protocol.